Good morning. On this first official day of summer, I think it is today anyway, uh, we continue as we read through Acts chapter 5. Uh, I went through verse 11 yesterday um, with uh, things going on. And, and here in chapter verse 12, we find that it says, Many signs and wonders were done among the people through the apostles. And they were all together in Solomon's portico. And Solomon's portico was most likely uh, one of the rooms kind of on the east side of the temple. It wasn't, you know, uh, I mean, Solomon was one of the, you know, he was uh, the, the person who had built this temple years and years ago. But it's Solomon's portico in a temple, and the disciples were there, the apostles, I guess we call them now, because the apostles are those who are sent to, to uh, tell the word and to spread the word. But they were all gathered together, so the 12 of them, you know, including the newly elected Matthias, and they were teaching, they were preaching, they were curing and healing so many people and, and the miracles that were going on and, and the power of the, the Holy Spirit was so evident in and through them that, you know, Luke writes that people brought the sick and the lame on cots and stuff into the streets so that as, as Peter and the others walked by, just the, the shadow of Peter would fall upon them, you know, just, and, you know, it makes it sound like just that. Just being, having the shadow of Peter uh, cast upon you as, you as you walked by would, would be enough it, because it says they were all cured. I mean, these, who knows how many, hundreds of people were coming, brought, and, and were all healed. And it says that, you know, they were tormented by, un, it was un, with unclean spirits and the sick and all of those, bringing them from all of the towns around Jerusalem. And then the high priests took action. The high priests and the Sadducees, the kind of the ruling group again of the, of the Jewish faith, they took action. Why? Jealousy. That's what it says. They were jealous of, uh, they were being filled with jealousy and they arrested the apostles and put them in public prison. And this was, you know, later in the day. So then, you know, in the morning time, when they gathered, they were going to address the issue. However, there were other plans by the Holy Spirit, by God. And, and the angel of the Lord came during the night and said to these apostles as they were in prison, you know, go back to the temple and continue to preach, continue to teach, continue to do your ministry, continue to spread the word of Jesus. And miraculously, the, the apostles found themselves out of the jail. Uh, the guards didn't know they were gone because in the morning when the when the police of the temple came, uh, the guards were all there. They looked and they were puzzled, perplexed, it says, because the, the, the prisoners were gone. But in some ways, I, I look at that and I think about, you know, the Holy Spirit with our sins, you know, that, you know, we, we sometimes, you know, those sins are within us and, and sometimes they're locked in our minds and in our hearts and it's so hard for us to let them go. But... Somehow, miraculously, God comes and says, boom, they're forgiven. You'll just, you know, it, it's, it's a power of God that is just surpasses anything we can really understand and know. But anyway, the apostles had been set free, and in the morning they went back to the temple, and they continued their teaching. And, you know, then, you know, the guards had come. They weren't there, and somebody showed up to this group in the morning and said, you know, these guys that you arrested last night, they're all back in the temple and they're preaching and they're teaching the people. And it says then the captain went with the temple police and brought them without violence because they were afraid of being stoned by the people. Think about that. The police, the captain of the police and the temple guards were afraid that by arresting, by harassing these apostles who the people were clamoring for, they were afraid of the people. And, I mean, I don't promote violence against the police in any respect of the, at all. But, you know, the, these, these police officers or the temple police had enough understanding that, you know, these disciples, these apostles of Jesus were doing so much good that the people wanted to hear, the people needed to hear. And today yet, people need to hear this word of Jesus. So they brought the apostles in front of the high priest and, uh, and the Sadducees, the elders, 
And the high priest says to them, We gave you strict orders not to teach, yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. Uh, you think about that. They say, You are determined to bring this man's blood on us. Well, they, they were the guilty ones of, of Jesus' blood, you know, they, and they were the ones that had stirred everything up, but they didn't want to hear that. And Peter's response to them is, we must obey God rather than human authority, rather than any human authority. You know, we must obey God. And our world has forgotten that. And I, you know, touch on that every once in a while, but... We must obey God. We've got to listen to God's word and, and, and take it for what it says. You know, when God says this, this is what we do. This is what we believe. This is what we teach. We don't explain. We don't read more into it. We don't, we don't change the word of God because God's word is, is true and stands fast. And, and he goes on, he says, The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. And this is, you know, the tree is a symbol for the cross. You know, sometimes on a crucifixion, they may have put a crossbar on a tree. But, um, but it, he goes on, God exalted him. He raised him from the dead. And when, when these people heard what Peter had to say, they, they wanted, it says they were enraged and they wanted to kill him. But one of the Pharisees, Gamaliel, speaks up and he says, remember, you know, a few years back, there was this, this Thaddeus that rose up. And I think that was his first one's name. Um, the, the, he rose up and people began to follow him. Well, this, this person died and pretty soon everything just stopped. You know, it was, it was done for and then he says after that, this Judas the Galilean rose up at the time of the census. And remember the census? That was when Joseph and Mary went to Jerusalem and Jesus was born. So roughly 30 years before Jesus or 27, whatever, you know, 30 years or so before Jesus' ministry began, there was this other person that had begun a following and he had gotten to have a bunch of people and, and he died and all who believed him uh, were scattered. So Gamaliel says, let's just let this, let's just let this play itself out. Let's just see what happens. If this Jesus is real, if this salvation through Jesus, if, if this Holy Spirit that's working through these disciples, if this movement is from God, there's nothing we can do about it to stop it. If it's not from God, it will just like the others before it, pass away and, and be gone. You know, it'll just, it'll just, you know, in time it'll diminish because there will be nothing more happening. But if these apostles continue the works, if, if the word of Jesus continues to impact people, if this is from God, there's nothing we can do to stop it. Think about that. If this is from God, there's nothing we can do. He says, if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. In that case, you might even be found to be fighting God. And think about that warning to these religious leaders, this Jewish council who were the leaders of the Jewish people, the, the leaders of the faith, the, the, the teachers, the ones who were encouraging others in their belief and trust in God. Gamaliel says to them, you might find yourselves going against God. And, you know, definitely they did. I mean, they were... When they, well, I guess in crucifying Jesus, this was a part of what had to happen. So they were going against this, this Messiah. They weren't accepting the Messiah. So in some ways they were going against God, against the prophecies, against God's promises, and not accepting them. But it was one of the things that had to happen. In Gamaliel's speech, you know, it was in you know, verses like 30... 34 to 36 or somewhere for 39, um, he spoke uh, words of wisdom. And words of wisdom that we still, I mean, I think we really need to listen to today, that if something is from God, there is no way that we can stop it. If it's not from God, it will in time diminish and become less important. So Luke tells us in the next chapter, verse, that 
the council was convinced by Gamaliel's speech. And when they called the apostles in, they had them flogged. They ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus, and they let them go. And then it switches back to the disciples, apostles. After the council, as they left the council, they rejoiced that they were considered worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name of Jesus. And every day in the temple and at home, they did not cease to teach and to proclaim Jesus as Messiah. So if it's from God, there's no stopping it. When, when God is behind something, it's, it's going to happen. And, and it just, I mean, it's, God had promised from the very beginning uh, sin of Adam and Eve and through Moses and of other prophets that there would be a savior. And God fulfilled his promise in Jesus Christ. And since we still today teach about Jesus, since we still preach about Jesus, since we believe in Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we can look at these words of Gamaliel. If this is from God, there is no stopping it. And, and just, I mean, it just helps me trust so much more that Jesus is the Messiah, that Jesus is the Savior, that Jesus is the one that we need to have in our lives each and every day. Um, may you continue to live this day in God's blessing.